Well, here we are, and it's um, Easter Sunday, so I'd like to say um, Happy Easter to everyone. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to say, but I'm hoping you are um, enjoying Easter as much as you can do. Um, I know this time of the year, normally we might go out to do Easter egg hunts, um, which we can't really do at the moment. But um, if you've got family, then maybe you can get some cabbage cream eggs um, if you've been out to the shop. And then just simply you do like an Easter egg hunt in your home, um, hide them under certain bits and pieces in different rooms, and then get the family to sort of say, and do some clues and that, maybe say, well, um, the clue aimed you in a certain area of the house um, and get them to maybe do an Easter egg hunt in the home. But if we reflect on Easter, then we remember that Easter is a time with Good Friday that Jesus, um, he died on the cross and that where I left the last one and then I did a video talking about the fruits of the Spirit and that but Easter Sunday is the day that we recognize the most which is the good news day and I've got a little bit um if I keep looking down it a little bit I'm reading semi notes and bits and pieces and bits on my phone which I've got so basically the resurrection of Jesus it's actually the foundation of the Christian life. And without the resurrection um, and the belief of God's saving grace that through Jesus and without him dying on the cross, then there's not a lot really that there is, is there? It's the fact that he died on the cross and we crucified on the cross to forgive us of our sin and the fact that he did rise and rose from the dead on the third day that we can be forgiven we have faith and trust in Jesus when Jesus rose from the dead he confirmed his identity as the son of God the resurrection was real. Jesus, um, on Good Friday, we know that Jesus was arrested, tied and found guilty because he was claiming to be the king. His body was hung upon a cross, which is why we were recognised um, Good Friday. He was, we know he was tied to a cross. His hands were pierced with nails, and there were two other um, feet that were, that's why there were three crosses. It was wrapped in linen clothes and placed in a tomb, and the large stone was rolled in the doorway. So you just could not get out, and that across the opening. The third day, which was the Sunday, Easter Sunday, Mary Madeline and another Mary went to the tomb to find it empty. Brilliant. And sitting on the rolled away stone was an angel of the Lord who told them to not be afraid because Jesus was risen from the dead. The woman left to tell the disciples Jesus met them and showed them his pierced hand to prove I am the Son of God. I am alive. I am Jesus. Look at my hands. Is there anyone out around here that would have had now I am Jesus. I am alive. And both the New and the Old Testament speak the truth of Jesus being raised from the dead. Jesus testified of his resurrection before he died on the cross and his disciples witnessed his body after the resurrection. I've got a load and loads of passages 
and notes from the Bible. Um, some of them we'll go through um, now. Um, there's quite a few verses and some of them are the whole book of some bits, so we won't do that, but I can give you the reading so that you can read that from them later on at a later time, if you so wish. So, now's the time that if you have a Bible, brilliant, go and grab it. If you haven't, click on the top, along here somewhere, you've got like tabs, open a new tab, go on the internet, search for Bible, get hold of a Bible, and then follow me and I'll give you a few seconds, I'll pause and give you a few seconds to grab a Bible and follow me. So I'll pause for a second. Back, yeah, back, you got one, brilliant. Right, here we go. So I'm going to put my glasses on because as I said before in another video, I cannot see a thing without them, or I can't read a thing without them. Even though I think I probably looked on there without them and I managed it somehow. But we're going to, with the Bible, and I said I've got the promised one, which is a bit more simple to read. We are going to go straight to the New Testament. And it's a very, very, very first book of the New Testament. We're going to go to Matthew. And if you're not too sure where Matthew is, it's halfway through the Bible. First book of the New Testament. And if I have my Bible, and if it will help you. Uh, Right, okay, we're 28. Here we go. 28. And it's page 1147. No, no, forget that because it won't be 1147 in your Bible. Um, it's Matthew chapter 28. And we will. Re There's not too much of it, so we re we'll read the whole lot actually. The Sabbath was over and it was almost daybreak on Sunday when Mary Madeline and the other Marys went to see the tomb. Suddenly a strong earthquake struck and the Lord Angel came down from heaven. He rolled away the stone and sat on it. The angel looked as bright as lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards shook from fear and fell down, but they thought they were dead. The angel said to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who is now to a cross. He ain't here. God had raised him to lie, just as Jesus said he would. Come see the place where his body was laying. Now hurry. Tell his disciples that he had been raised to lie and is on his way to Galilee. Go there and you'll see him. That is what I came to tell you. The women were frightened and yet very happy as they hurried from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and greeted them. They went near him, how to his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said, don't be afraid, tell my followers you go to Galilee. They will see me there. While the women were on their way, some soldiers who had been guarding the tomb went into the city. They told the chief priest everything that had happened. So the chief priest met the leaders and decided to bribe the soldiers with a lot of money. They said to the soldiers, tell everyone that Jesus' disciples came during the night and stole his body while you were sleeping. If the gunman has heard about this, we will talk to him. You won't have anything to worry about. The soldiers took the money and did what they were told. The people of Julie still tell each other this story. 
Jesus, the eleven disciples, went to mountain of Galilee, where Jesus had told them to meet them. They saw him and worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came to them and said, I have been given, I have been given all, authority, all authority in heaven and on earth. Excuse me. Go to the people of all nations and make them my disciples. Baptise them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to do everything I have told you. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Hallelujah. Thank you to God. So, as you can see, they went to the, the tomb, Jesus there, um, He's ridden from the dead. But then again, it goes on as you move further on through the Bible. Again, if you move a little bit further to the next book of the New Testament. So we are moving now to Mark. And as I said, we are moving around a little bit today. Uh, we're going to go to Mark chapter. 16 um, and of course Mark chapter 16 right from this is from verse 1 to 20 again after Sabbath Mary Madeline Salome and Mary and the Mary of James brought some spices to put on Jesus body very early on Sunday morning just as the sun was coming up they went to the tomb on their way, they were asking one another, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance for us? But when they looked, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away, and it was a huge stone. The women went to the tomb, and on the right side they saw a young man in a white robe sitting there. They were alarmed. The man said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus from Navarus, who was now to a cross. God had raised him to life, and he isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Now go and tell his disciples, and especially Peter, that he will go ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. When the women ran through the tomb, they were confused and shaken all over. They were too afraid to tell anyone what had happened. And it goes on right through to the end of chapter 20. And if you want to read that, you can do. But then we carry on through the, the gospel to Luke. And if you just continue just flipping over the pages, you don't have to go all the way hunting here, there and everywhere at the moment over the Bible. You just keep... Flicking through, Luke is the next one after Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, one Christian, two Christians, so on. So it's quite easy at the moment to find your way through. So we're going to Luke um, chapter 24, and this is quite a long um, passage because this goes right through the whole chapter. Um, Luke 24, right from verse 1, right through to verse 53. So it's a very, very long, long, long book, which you can um, follow through um, in your own time. So if you make a note, you can follow this through. But it starts off again. Um, it highlights at the top. Um, if you can see that there, chapter 24, and it clearly states Jesus is alive. It said, very early Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, carrying the spices that they had prepared. When they found the stone rolled away from the entrance, they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, and they did not know what to think. Suddenly, two men in shining white clothes stood beside them. The women were afraid and bowed to the ground. But the man said, 
Are you looking for the place of the dead? For someone who is alive, Jesus isn't here. He had been risen from the dead. Remember that while he was still in Galilee, he told you, the Son of Man will be headed over to Synod, who will nail him to a cross. But three days later, he will rise to life. Then they remembered what Jesus had said. So we can see right through the book of the Gospel, it's talking a lot about um, Jesus being raised from the dead. Prior to that, um, from um, if you go back to Luke 23, and from verse, um, Luke 23, verse 13, it's talking about the death sentence, and then from verse 20, um, um, Luke 23, from verse 26 onward to the end, it's talking about when Jesus was now to a cross, which was the Good Friday, and the death of Jesus, Jesus being buried, to chapter 24, three days later, when he's raised from the dead. Then we move to the next book, the last book of the Gospel, of the four Gospels. So we're going to John um, 20 now. John 20. Looking through, trying to find it quickly. John chapter 20. And let's now go right the way through. Um, John 20, verse 1 to... Um, 31 so you can read this in your time and it's talking about Jesus appearing to Mary Madeline Jesus appeared to his disciples and that and then it states on the Sunday morning while it was still dark that she went to the throne the stone was rolled away and that and that they saw that Jesus was alive and that's in John 20. But then as we continue, and I've gone to the wrong bit, so then we're going to skip a few books of the Bible, and we're going to go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and then we're going to go from verse 3 to 8. And it says, I told you the most important part of the message exactly as, I, as it was told to me that part, that part is Jesus died for our sins as the scripture says. He was buried and three days later is raised to life. The scripture says, Christ appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After this, he appeared to more than 500 other followers. Most of them are still alive, but some had died. He also appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. Uh, finally, he appeared to to me, even though I am like someone who was born at the wrong time. So it appears to all of us. <coughs> um, so you can see, but then also we move on a little bit further within the same chapter um, from four. Chapter 14 to 21, it says, And if Christ wasn't raised to life, our message is worthless, and so is your faith, what I said at the beginning. If the dead wasn't to be raised to life, we have told lies about God by saying that he was raised, that he raised Christ to life when he really did not. 
So if the dead won't be raised to life, Christ wasn't raised to life. Unless Christ was raised to life, your faith is useless and you are still living in your sins. And those, peop those people who died after putting their faith in him are completely lost. So without Christ dying on the cross, our sins couldn't have been forgiven. We would be living constantly in a world of sin and that. And if we go on toward the end, uh, I'm trying to look at my notes here, and the print is so small in my Bible with the verses, it's trying, difficult to find it. We're going, um, we're still in Corinthians 1, verse, um, chapter 15, but we're going from verse 54 to the end, to 57. The bodies we have, we now have, are, we can, can die, but they will be changed into bodies that are eternal. And then the scripture will come true. Death has lost the battle. Where, where's its victory? Where's its sting? Sin is what gives death its sting, and the law is the power behind sin. But thank God for letting our Lord Jesus Christ give us the victory. My dear friends, stand firm and don't be shaken. Always keep busy working for the Lord. You know that everything you do for him is worthwhile. Everything we do for the Lord is worthwhile. Right, we're going to go slightly backwards a little bit now, back to Romans, and Romans is two books after the Gospels, so you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, okay, and we're going to Romans chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Uh, three and four. Here we go. This good news is about the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. As a human, he was from the family of David. But the Holy Spirit proved that Jesus is the powerful Son of God because he was raised from the dead. It's talking about, again, him being raised from the dead. Now, I've got to remember where I put some little things now. Because we are now going to 2 Timothy. No, that's not it. Here we go, 2 Timothy. I've put in some little bits and pieces so I don't have to jump around. We are going to go to 2 Timothy quickly. Uh, first 8. Again, in this bit. Keep your mind on Jesus Christ. He was from the family of David, and he was raised from dead, just as my good news says. Again, talking about Jesus being raised from the dead. Now, I'm losing my place. Ah found it. That was quite good. Um, again, um, in Ephesians 4, verses, verses uh, where have we got to? Ephesians 4, verses 8 to 10, it said, as the scripture says, when he went up to the highest place, he led away many prisoners and gave gifts to people. When it says he went up, it means that Christ had been deep in the earth. This also means that the one who went deep into the earth is the same one who went into the highest heaven. 
so that he would fill the whole universe. <clears throat> so he went into the depths of the earth to fill the whole universe. So although he died on a cross, it's the same. Don't want to talk about it too much because the situation we're in at the moment. Um, but you know where I'm coming from. Um, right. We are now going to slightly into the Old Testament now because the Old Testament also talks about Jesus' resurrection. So we are going to go to Job or Job. It's that Job, but it's pronounced Job. Job 19, and this is quite funny actually, I, I just going away just for a couple of minutes, I tore up some little um, bits of paper to do some bookmarks, and when I found this bit of paper, it's, um, you don't see them anymore, Maplins, I thought, might well tear that with up, whatever that was for, I'm not going to be taking it back to them again. Anyway, uh, thing for Maplin. You two love that shop, and whatever happened. Anyway, right, back to the thing in principle. Um, we're Job 19, verses 25 and 26. It said about Jesus being raised from the dead now. I know that my Saviour lives, and at the end he will stand on this earth. My flesh may be destroyed, yet from this body I will see God. Because Jesus died for us, and because he died to forgive our sins, we have an eternal life through him. It's only a couple more bits, so bear with me. Um, if we go right back to the New Testament towards the end of the Bible, that is almost the end of the Bible, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 to 15. Uh, 12 to 15... Right, and when you were baptised, now I've been baptised, I was baptised in 1991, um, I can always remember the time when I was baptised, it was um, a place, um, the family have, they, they, they had this great big like conservatory in the garden. It was an enclosed, uh, well, a conservatory is enclosed, but it was a swimming pool in the big conservatory. But unfortunately, the night before, they had a power cut, which meant the heating of the pool stopped working. So the pool and the water was cold. I also decided on that day that I was going to wear jeans. Not the best of clothes to wear when you're going to be baptised or go in any form of water. So there was I with the pastor, stood in the water with my hand, saying a prayer and what they're saying, you know, and believe in Jesus, yeah. Son of God, that he died in that. I was standing there, cold, <laughs> jeans on, first down into the water, come back out, I was freezing cold, and then I tried to have to. I can't move it! It was always remember being baptized, not for that reason, but I felt so so different. I went 
down the old me was completely washed. It was like I was reborn again. I was born into the spirit. I was washed away with all everything. Um, we also had at my church, we had a Holy Spirit weekend. I was very privileged to have met um, um, Javis Cooper, the, which is the man and the bloke who wrote King of King's Majesty. He came to the island, we had a Holy Spirit weekend, I met him personally and he prayed for me and prayed for a few others and I was stood there and I just felt wobbly like this and uh, okay Lord you, you're going to take me, you're going to take me, just, uh, I'm ready for you Lord and I just went boom down and all I wanted to do was laugh and giggle how long I was on the floor for I don't know I can't explain it anyone that haven't happened to before I cannot explain it unless it's happened to you you can't explain it to anyone it's not fame it's not anything like that but it's the most wonderful experience you can have to go down in the Holy Spirit and I felt so different so I, I can't explain it but so full of joy so wonderful experience but as I was saying in this bit here and I've lost the place now yeah um, we were Colossians chapter 2 12 to 15 and when you were baptized it was the same as being buried with Christ then you were raised to life because you had faith in the power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because you were sinful and you were not God people. But God let Christ make you alive when he forgave all our sins. God wiped out the changes that were against us for disobeying the law of Moses. He took them away and nailed them to the cross. That is why he died on Good Friday. And that is why he rose again on the third day. There Christ defeated all power and forces. He let the whole world see them being led away as prisoners when he celebrated his victory. Amen. Wow, what a powerful scripture that is. Praise the Lord. And we move to the very, very last bit now. And what I might do with this last bit, actually, um, because I've been talking now for about half an hour and I didn't really want to go on too long um, because I've done this a bit longer than even a church service, really, or a speak. Um, the last bit, and I've gone to the wrong chapter, I didn't think that looked right, actually. Um, I'm going to leave this with you and you can then comment to me what it's about which will be quite a good thing to know how many people have watched this video to know what it said and to how many people had actually read the Bible to put a comment back to me to let me know what it actually said. So I'm going to give you a challenge and something to do. And the verse is 
And the last bit of the scripture is Romans chapter 6. And I'll put, I'll put a note when I upload this. So you've got it. So it's Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. And I encourage you to read that. And then maybe put a comment and say to me, what it spoke about. It will still be relating around Jesus dying, forgiving our sins, rising again. Okay? But what did it talk about? And I'll leave that with you. Okay? I'm not going to read it. I'll leave that with you. Okay? But as we look today that Jesus, he did die on the cross. He did rise, rise again from the dead on the third day. And he did that for each and every one of us so that we can have eternal life through him. We are faced at the most difficult time of our life. But we have the Lord Jesus on our side we can put our trust and faith in him he can make us strong he can guide us through time of trouble we can pray to him we can ask him for strength for guidance we can help one another we can look out for one another as I said in my last video, the fruits of the Spirit that we practice. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. All fruits of the Spirit that we are doing to help one another. I bless you, my dear friends, and I hope that you stay safe. Stay at home, look after one another. Protect the NHS, as they say. And just be there for one another. Take care. God bless.